Good evening to all participants and to our eminent speaker. On behalf of BCF India, I take this opportunity in introducing our today's speaker, Dr. N. B. K. Ashraf. Since 2019, Dr. Ashraf is serving as a senior director and chief veterinarian at Wildlife Trust of India. Dr. Ashraf have completed his bachelor's in veterinary science at Madras Veterinary College and Master's in Wildlife Science from Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun. He worked in Coimbatore Zoological Park as Assistant Director for nine years and moved to Wildlife Trust of India in 2001. The Wildlife Trust of India aims to conserve wildlife and its habitat. They also work for the welfare of individual animals. Wildlife, has been, wildlife Trust of India has been credited for the achieving various conservation milestones such as recovering population of critically endangered species, translocation of species, reducing human animal conflict, rescue and rehabilitation of animals, including elephants, tigers, leopards, one-horned rhinos and bears. Wildlife management is his major theme interest and spearheading the wildlife rescue, rehabilitation and health at Wildlife Trust of India. He has working for several projects on rehabilitation of orphaned clouded leopards in Assam, mitigation conflicts between humans and big cat species in Uttar Pradesh. He works also includes case studies from India on translocation as management option for tigers that move out of the source areas, clinical management of suspected organophosphate poisoning in gyps vulture in Assam, India. As one would know that the responsibilities of wildlife enthusiasts never ends. He has worked on gibbon translocation, swamp tea translocation, conflict animal management, and largely rescue and rehabilitation that included orphan elephants, rhino, clouded leopard, Asiatic black bear, and many other taxas. He is also interested in ancient literary history. To know about him, he is a scholar of Tirukurantu. He also published the Health Protocol for Transportation of Rescued Animals and Deer and Leopards in National Workshop for Zoo Veterinarians organized by Central Zoo Authority, Tanuvas and Aringar Anna Zoological Park during 2011. We are happy to stay connected with you, Dr. N. V. K. Ashraf, on this virtual platform during the COVID-19 and to listen more on Pandanath Shah, Bombax Squirrel. Amazing plant animal analogies from animal Tamil literature. Over to you, Dr. N. V. K. Ashraf. Vanakkam, vanakkam for everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the, my introduction, thanks for the introduction. That was completely on my professional side. I have like, been Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. Hyde, we have, I have a double face, which is uh, my off situ. Ex situ, offside interest is in literature, comparative religion, especially ethical literature. Now, uh, when uh, thanks for inviting me to be a speaker on this occasion. Last time I spoke about uh, Bera's in Indian culture, it was about uh, three and a half months back. And tomorrow, Guru approached me again for another topic, especially on literature and wildlife. I gave this one rather than giving something that I have already spoken on various uh, forums. Uh, the reason is because uh, this particular topic is of uh, special interest to me, close to my heart, and you will soon realize why I say that this particular topic is uh, close to my heart. And my speech will be largely, almost entirely based on a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, uh, because um, every I have picturized everything scene by scene on what I have uh, learned from Sangam literature to respect to the treatment of nature. This pandanus shark and bombax script, and uh, these are just uh, two representative samples among the amazing plant animal and all of these comparisons that we find in common literature. 
about 99% of the differences. What I am going to speak is consumer literature. Now I feel that I could have given the title as simple literature. There are one or two, maybe three or four references that come from post syndrome literature. That is why I decided to do the topic as simple literature. But it is by and large almost entirely from this boy's name is Farhad from Kerala. And he was there, he was born in Kerala in 2011. And uh, he lived in a place not very far from Wando town in Kerala. He grew up in an environment surrounded by iconic plantations, rubber plantations, rock fields, mountain slopes, and uh, Hardly any vehicles come, there was no internet, proper net connectivity. All he had was to hear about animals, calls of birds. They had a they had hand raised a fixed like a fixed like palm spirit. He named every name, he had a name for every particular species. He called this squirrel as Tari. What happened? His father got a job in Saudi Arabia. In the 13, he had to go to Saudi Arabia. But even to this day, he keeps his interest in wildlife. And to keep uh, to satisfy his demands, they frequently take him to the pet shops where he has opportunities to only interact with species like property. So when he was in Kerala, he had an opportunity see switch soon we realized he was more interested in other moving stuff like car the swift desire he used to say based on the sound this is swift desire not swift swift desire subspecies level he was able to his attention we got distracted and if this is what is happening in the contemporary world we have lost the connectivity with nature because we are living in a world of gadgets, televisions, telephone, and whatnot. If, if we are to write a poetry in the future, if he grows up as an adult, he may not be writing anything like this, like whatever ancestors wrote. Very often, poets are very fond of comparing women to various fauna and flora. Eyes are compared to the fish. I am going to a very famous name in town. The car. Or sometimes eyes are compared to the lotus or the lilies. The waist is they're supposed to be very thin, as thin as a creeper. Arms and shoulders are compared to bamboos. So a few examples. Banana stems and so many things. So this is what uh, person who has experienced nature would write about in a poetry. But of late, you know, but what happens ultimately we are living in a world of jackets and I can remember, I can give a big example of a poet Vaidamuthu's song in Indian, in the movie Indian, Telephone Monibol, Sinkravali Mala, Melbourne, Malarbon, Lillia Magala, Digitabil Siddhikya Kurala, her voice is supposed to be composed by Lord Brahma digitally and she resembles Zaki Hussein Tabela and her name is Sona, it's a cellular fauna. So these are the kind of similes you will get attracted to if you have to write a poetry in these days, the contemporary environment. That is purely because that is what we see moving. We don't hear the birds chirping. We don't see animals going. We don't see all those things. We see only this. So we are living in an environment which is disconnected from nature. But that was not the case about 2000 years ago when people wrote literature, especially Tamil literature. There's a speciality with Tamil literature. Among all Indian languages, only Tamil and Kannada can boast literature. Before 10th century CE, all regional languages, the literature starts post 10th century. 
only in Canada and only you can see the pictures in the photo Sanskrit is Sanskrit and Prophet are different. We do not know which region they belong to. In fact, in most languages, the literature starts with Mahabharata and Ramayana. But in Tamil, the literature started began before the Christ period, that is first century BC. We do not know whether it was much earlier. There are people who speculate that it could have been much earlier, but it doesn't matter. The literature we have at present are dated to the first century CE, first century BC. Now, since my talk is mainly about Sangam literature, we need to know the salient features of Sangam literature. So, I will be spending around 10 minutes only on that to describe the nuances of Sangam literature. It contains 18 major works, what we call 8 anthologies and 10 images, 10 songs. All those listed are in Tamil, you need not worry. But as of now, must be aware that we have 18 major works. My exposure to Sangam literature happened in 2004 when my friend Dr. Tirumurgan, who is now working in the Safari Park in Vietnam, brought me a bag full of books, all these volumes. And then uh, I stored it. I didn't touch it for nearly four years. I knew about some literature. I had other things to study. I was more interested in ethical literature, not necessarily only Tamil, global ethical literature. And in 2008, I came across a website called Kaktak Mitka. It's based on the two uh, words in Telugu, Kaktak Mitka. Kaktak means to study, and Mitka means to stand, stand according to that, what we are studying. There I saw some amazing comparisons. Flora and fauna, a few pictures here and there. I was so excited. And being a wildlife lord, that was the one that actually drew me towards Sangam literature. Sangam literature almost entirely is secular in nature. Secular, I mean non religious. In any literature, you will find generally earthly aspirations and heavenly aspirations. Nature, unfortunately, when I look at it, is inversely proportional to the religiosity. The more religious the work is, less nature. Okay, even in the 18 major works, two can be considered, two are the religious works, Kanpadal and Kirimurgatuka. These are only two religious works. On these, you will find the parables and similes and information about nature naturally less. And when you come down to the 6th century AD and 7th century CE, even during the Bhakti period, it's all Bhakti. People who, they, they anthropomorphized the, the, the deities, the deities were the gods, were the deities, they were, they were the beloveds, what we call mystical, uh, bridal mysticism. So subject change, the target change, and the uh, the frequency of references to nature in subsequent literatures decreased. Now, there is no better example to than this particular poem from Purana Nodi to suggest how down to earth the earthly where people of the Sangam age. This was written by Kanyan Kumanar. Modi also referred to this particular poem in one of his speeches recently. Kumbhanar says, all the world is our world. And it's not actually a world, it's a world. The world is our home. All men are kin. Every country is mine, everyone our kin. Good and evil are not caused by others, nor are sufferings and relief. We do not excel that life is very sweet. Nor do we cry in bitterness that life is cruel. We know from the vision of our forefathers, from seers, that life takes its fated course like a raft that floats in a rapid water, swirling among the rocks during the monsoon. Therefore, 
we neither marvel at the great nor look at the small or the weak in this way. So this is the, the basic philosophy of people of the Sankhya Puja. Now the last two lines resemble very much what Shakespeare said in Predicus. We are gentlemen, but neither in our hearts nor outward eyes can be the great nor do we despise the world. It's something that Kun Gopanar said another person centuries later had to say this in English. Kavinikov, the poets of the Sangal age and the poems, largely they are all anthologies of 2381 poems written by many poets. They were collected and assembled as books in the 6th or 7th century. They were written at least they were in circulation about five or five years or whatever or more, and they were anthologies by one particular author put together and then made into a book. Each poem varies from just three lines in Nine Room Europe, which is a very good example, to 782 lines. I'm talking about the length of a poem. You may wonder what is this 782 lines? Yes, there is one poem. The Patu Patu. All those Patu Patu songs are like non stop range. They start and end at the last line. One good example I have given is Madhuri Kam, 782 lines. Written by 473 poets whose names are known. There are many poets whose names are. There are no colophons for many poets. You know the names of these poets. And two basic examples I can give. There are 450 men, poets among them. 450 were men and 23 were women. The best examples I give, more popular ones, Kapila and Avaya. Now you should see this picture. You can see all both of them having this Ibuti on their forehead, which is a result of the creation by a modern they're all religious these days, and uh, we have several awayas. This picture might reflect awaya of the 12th century, see, not necessarily awaya of the Sangam period. There is a convention in every poetry in Tamil, there is a strong traditional convention in Tamil poetry. We classify, the poets classify, the grammarians classify into Adam and Puram. Adam is interior feelings, Puram is exterior feelings. Actions. Roughly, you can call Adam is all about love, whether it is pre marital or post marital, or even extra marital. They come to come about it. That is love. That is a relationship between a man and a woman. The other thing is, exterior is all work, generally work, but also ventures into business, social activities, business enterprise, or studies. I want work. Now, you may tend to think that. Interior, Adam is nothing but inside, Dalta Mamla, and outside, Bahar, exterior, Puram is nothing but Bahar Kamamla. But that is not the case. You see, these days we all work from home, but it is not Adam, it is Puram, it is about the society, about the job. Okay. Similarly, Adam can, can happen outside also. How, according to Tamil convention, happens in the mountainous landscape, in nature. The landscape is interiorized, as A.K. Ramarajan famously said, the landscape is interiorized into Adam poetry. Nature, you will find references to nature more in Adam poetry, inside poetry, not external actions poetry. So much so that 78% of the Sangam poems are about interior feelings, Adam points, love points, 78 percent of Adam points are love. Every Adam poem you can constitute has got three components. Any poem, Adam poem you take, components. You will find them in their review. Sometimes you may not find that it all depends on the length of the poem. You will have at least two. But usually even in a small three line or four line Poem, you will be able to find all the three constituents of an Adam poem. What they call Mudalpur, 
Second, based on the last thing, initial and temporal. Place is what is the place? Is it the sea coast? Is it the mountain? Is it an agricultural field? Temporal the time, morning, evening, or the season, summer, winter. Spatial and temporal, what they call mudal code. Mudal code is primary. The next one is karu code. This is where nature comes. Crux, this is called karu. Embryo. Karu means embryo. The crux. Nature and culture. The cultural aspects of people. The boards, instruments, all those things will come there. And nature. Fauna and flora. Karu. And Uripur, which talks about, this is actually about love. Uripur means the mood, the feelings and reactions of both man, woman, and even the concubine, and whoever is involved in a relationship. So all, every poem has these three poems. Uripur, or a poem, or a Uripur. Now, these are all called Tinai. The, in double, the landscape is called Tinai. We have, don't have an alternate better word to translate. Tinai has got multiple meanings. What we call Agar Tinai and Pura Tinai. Agar Tinai is interior Tinai, interior landscape, and Pura Tinai is about war and other things. So, Tinai means earth, land, place, region, house, right, past. And look at the sixth one, sixth meaning. Conventional rules of contact laid down in Tamil words of two classes, Agatinai and Puratinai. Agatinai is inside, love, Puratinai is war and other things outside. This is what is called Pinai. So Pinai means roughly landscape. Now you can see this uh, cross section, you can imagine that this is the cross section of the Western Guards from Arabian Sea on the left, the Bay of Bengal on the right. One of the, we have Tamils classified into basically four or five landscapes. We have five landscapes. One is littoral, littoral landscape, which is coastal, sea and surrounding area. Then riverine, lowland riverine areas, where the agriculture is done. Fresh water, uh, other than we can say fresh water, lowland riverine. Scrubs and grasslands, rolling grasslands. I have seen many people always very really seeing as forest. Yes, everything is a forest, but it's a scrubland forest and undulating or rolling grasslands. Then we have the mountain and the foothills, which is, which is uh, the main, you can say, western part. Then there is something special, which is actually these are the Four principal lands. At over and above, we have one thing called a desert, what people use to translate it as desert, but actually they are all parched forests. Dry season. No food is anymore. But available. Animals are very weak. No water to drink. That kind of a scenario. That represents sadness. The past forest taken away from the mountain region as well as grassland landscape. For each landscape, for each Tinai, we have a love, particular aspect of love, which is in the mountains, it's a place where heroes meet, heroines heroes meet, and then where they unite. Union takes place in the mountainous landscape. Separation takes place in the past. When separation happens, then the poets invariably go to the past forest mood. And when a lady is waiting for her man to come in the evening, so is what is called waiting. And there is, there is a lover's quarrel. In the, it's all, all the illegal affairs happen when I, are in the riverine habitat, in the lowland areas, cultivated areas, where lover's quarrels happen. What they call, we have this uh, sulky, and all these uh, misunderstandings happen in the river in Lorenzo. And the littoral landscape is characterized by whining, okay, lamenting about the man's absence. So these are the moods 
point different modes. Now, these are all poetical, what poets do, poetical classification. It doesn't mean that uh, if a person wants to get fall in love, a person in literal landscape wants to fall in love, that he should go to boundaryless landscape and come back. No. These are all poetic conventions. When you read a poem that is about separation, it will be the fauna and flora, you will, will see it will be with respect to the past forest. Just for example. Now each of these denies, each of these landscapes have a particular name in town. The mountainous landscape is called Purinchi, based on the flower Strobilanthus. We do not know what species of Strobilanthus, but we know it could be a blue Strobilanthus that blooms in every seven years, or you have various species that blooms in every 14 years, which is a Strobilanthus. It's called Purinchi. The past forest is called Pali. Pali refers to a species. Itia tinctoria. You find that in Venture of Forest in Tamil Nadu. I have seen quite a few of them in the Anakati, Venture of Forest. It is Pali. Then we have Mullai. The scrub and grasslands are called Mullai. There is no Jasmine. It is Jasmine. Jasmine of the Dini species. Marudam. It is Lagastromia regina. It is now identified based on the species, based on the descriptions. Some people say it's terminal terminalia arduina, which has been refuted, and they say it is Lagastronia speciosa or Lagastronia arduina. And then Nathan. They are all names of the flowers. In Tamil, species identity is done by the flowers. The, 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 the identity, the name, name is given based on the flowers. Even if you go to a botanist, you take a plant or a stem or a leaf, anything. They will say, please, they get me the flower. The flower is the ultimate thing for species of identity. The natal is nothing but a lily. We fail. We do not know what species, but it is a freshwater lily. Now, each landscape, great forest, this is a mountainous landscape, Kuriji. each landscape has its own flora and fauna mentioned in. When you are talking about a Kurunji poem or a love poem, where uh, the union happens between man and woman, it is maybe in a mountainous landscape, a fauna, elephant, tiger, peacock, lion tail matter, monkeys, negrita, uh, and among trees, they call them one is the Bengal tree, the Philococcus mushroom. Philococcus mushroom, they are all lowland forests. You will find there is a lot of wide range from Kurinji, the Nidrita upper reach of uh, the Sholas, to the lowland forest. And the entire thing is called a mountainous landscape, including the Kokich. The other one is Moonlight, scrubs and rolling grasslands. The important species are the black Here, among birds, jungle fowl, cattle grazing and shepherding. And sheep comes to this particular pack. So, which means the, the, the other major mammals, mammalian species, the bear, which means this is a basically a scrubland or a grazing pasture land, what is called moonlight. Pale, which is a mixture of mountainous and rolling grassland scrub, in a dry system. Rice is there are no forest, no food is available, no water. We see that even now, when you go to Bandipur or Mudupadai, for instance, forest fire is an annual phenomenon and increasingly we are suffering. So, fire was not something unique. In fact, about, uh, I don't know the exact number, at least every third or every fourth fire talks about the forest fire. So, this is what is called Pali. We have the birds are out. Uh, bats, echoes, wild dogs, bears. The scene is very, uh, you know, it's just like an Alfred Hitchcock movie or an uh, Astra Christie movie scenario, kind of scenario, full of threat to the persons who are traveling along this landscape. The other most important thing is the river in the land where cultivation happens, what we call buffalo is the major species. 
list landscape is a domestic and buffalo is the middle of the Besides that, water, traps, stalks, hydrates, lotus, and lilies, including fishes. And I'm just giving you a sample of uh, key species for the particular landscape. The nadir, the coastal landscape is very interesting. You have uh, the algae bird identified as the uh, red nape ibis. You have the gulls and then sharks, marine crabs, crocodiles. In the riverine habitat, you have riverine mugger. Here you have saltwater crocodile. Here also you have an otter, which must be Lutra perspicillata. In the case of river, it could be Lutra Lutra. And uh, there also you had otters, here also you have otters and sharks, and there you had fishes. And here you have mangrove forests. So everything coastal is there in the coastal landscape. So I'd like to take one other poem as an example to illustrate where you can see all these three Mudalpur, Narakpur, and Uripur primary, tax, and the mood. This is this poem I have taken from Marudan landscape. Marudan landscape is the uh, riverine landscape where cultivation is done. The scene is that uh, the wife suspects man's illegal affairs. The concubine is talking to the hero. The mistress is talking to the hero. Poor man from a town where hirams are regrets. The translator uses the word, you know, usually they use the word regrets. With white wings and delicate wings, call loudly. This is about nature. This is about particular information about nature and culture. This is the crux. From where the call comes from, from the nearby long fields. Long fields have to be a cultivated land. This is space and time, particularly space. It is difficult for you to stay, to be at my place. Go home and be with your wife. These are feelings and reactions. This is Kuripur, Tarupur, Mudalpur, and Kuripur. This is the smallest, I have taken a very small poem to explain this. And in fact, the longer the poem, greater the detail. In that sense, Aganarur has got a lot of natural history information. What is Tarupur? The tax is missing from a poem. Why should they mention about nature in every other poem? What was the need? Of course, yes, we are acquainted with nature. That is why they wrote. But why mention that in every Adam poem as a ritual? It is because poets wanted to relate their human emotional experience with the happenings in the nature. They wanted to convey their message indirectly through things that are what is happening. Now, if we go to the Obatis poem, the poem, O oh man, from the town where hidden and white things dedicate. Now, wings call loudly. The call has come. The mistress has come to know that his wife wants to see him. The call has come. That is the message through, given through species, the animal behavior. So, that is what I said. Want to relate with animals, emotional experience, which happens in nature. Now, this can happen in any society. But if you want to put down all these things into writing, you need a tradition, you need a language that is very cultivated, you need a language that is decentralized, not confined to any particular group of elite members of a society or to the rulers and governors who will write on, go on writing edicts on rocks and boulders. And it has to be a literary tradition as well. It's all the prerequisites for a development of a poetry like Sangam poetry. And Tamil country, the ancient Tamil Adam had all these things together. If you look at there are inscriptions dating back to as of now 500 600 CE. But definitely before the Ashokan inscriptions, dated before Ashokan inscriptions. And those inscriptions are not stone carving done by the king or a ruler or a saint. The common people, 60%, 60% of the inscriptions unearthed in, in India come from Tamil Nadu. Of that 60 percent, 95 percent are Tamil. 
the most important thing is that all these inspections do not they are all most of these inspections are on or or that's just like scribbles on pottery which means there was a good high literacy rate prevailing among people the common folks were they knew how, what right and wrong and i'm sure tamil nadu in subsequent years actually failed literacy rate became very less now they are picking up um, that is uh, one thing these are the three requisites and you need a cultural unique identity there was a settled agrarian urban life lifestyle governed by kings and chiefs this is what we are talking about the period of some of the literature that we have some of the period would have been even earlier but the literature that we have as of now belongs to this period bracket so in the central literature you can talk about because it contains lot of natural history information you can talk about the environment the ecology and behavior in general you can talk about human wildlife conflict you can talk about social behavior of animals you can talk about coexistence with nature natural resource utilization prey predator interactions you have a subject you can write an essay or a talk or a thesis plant herbivore interaction Eating behaviors of various species, including the sloth bears, elephants, and prey species, the tiger, animal-human interactions, activity patterns also, because every canine, every landscape has a time. So from that you can make out, you can understand how people understood nocturnal animals, diurnal animals. So all these things are possible, and there are people who have documented it with reasonable all these things. reasonable success not very professional most of the writers in fact i have not seen any writer all, all writers are good uh, they know tamil they are tamil scholars and their knowledge about nature and natural history is uh, you can say not up to the mark so my talk is not going to be on this you can talk about landscapes ecosystem coastal ecosystem marine ecosystem tropical forest wet and dry scrubs Pastoral lands, freshwater ecosystem, agrarian. All these things you can talk about it. It is all there in some poetry. People have written about it a little bit. I am not going to talk about this. You can talk about each taxa of mammal, elephant, tiger, nigri da, jungle cat, dog, tiger, horse, as primates, goat bats, porcupines. All these things you can talk about. And here, Sami. I would say he is a pioneer. He is a pioneer on natural history of Tamil Nadu. He has written about plants, birds, fishes, uh, whatever limitations he had during the 70s and 80s. Uh, good works, good uh, reverent works. He says that around Tamil Nadu, you will find Tamil Nadu, not Kosam Nadu, only Tamil Nadu. Thirty five feet of mammals mentioned. You can talk about avian types of birds. Here, Sami again. He has written a book on the electric field and the blog on birds of prey. I have I have a blog on this. The other day, I shared a link to Ambika, who is I think is here in this listening uh, to me now. The parakeets, the coil crows, patrickus, sparrows, migratory birds. There is information. There is an aquatic species. Plenty of information. Plenty of stuff. Open the stuff for other stuff. I have not listed here. Loving those kingfisher, rays, gulls, goose, water hens, all these things you can write about. And uh, here Sami says, "Fifty eight species of birds." According to him, fifty eight species. I am not going to talk about this taxa based. I am not. My talk is not going to be taxa based. The other taxa, I put off now. Yes, twenty of them crocodiles. Tamils have used three words for the crocodile: Mudalai, Dengar, and Tara. And uh, there are people who suggested one is mother, one is saltwater crocodile, another one is gharial. I don't think so, because uh, we do not we don't think that gharial did not exist. It doesn't mean that they did not write about gharial. It requires further research to know, look at the places of occurrence, and decide uh, what it is all about. Agamids and turtles, mountain lizards, geckos, and invertebrates. Plenty of information on them. Spiders, shrimp, 
John, Boris, Massive, Spiders, all those. You can write about fishes. I'm not given the English names because uh, the list is enormous. So, so many fishes, freshwater fishes are mentioned, and marine fishes, and amphibians, frogs, or not much, but you have, and there are three different, three different species of frogs. We do not know, we have identified. So, all of these uh, things are there. My talk is not going to about this. Now, what is it going to be about? We can talk about the plants also. Now, is it something? Flora and different landscape, trees, shrubs, climbers, palms. You can be species wise, Dicas, Marua, Maduka Indica, Maduka Longifolia, Alexandrine Rongo, you are Palafonomina Pidam, Mochi, Vitex, Mugundo, or Neem, or Jackfruit. You could be species wise monoplots, bamboo, banana, screw pine tree, palmera. So these could be, you have, you have several avenues for to talk about nature in Sajam literature. And uh, one gentleman, C. Vasan, who wrote a book, something like the English Tower, and really says there are around 150 species, more than 10 names, 150 species of plants in the Indian Then, finally, there are comparisons, analogies, names, between various things, nature on one side, or flora and fauna on one side, pit it against various other things on the other side. Number one, flora and fauna with artifacts, with drums. Here you see the falling of Mahua flowers is compared to the falling of the pearls. This particular. There are poems, I'm just giving an example. There are poems that compare with artifacts. Nature with. There are poems that compare flora and fauna with nature, with other substrates. Here in the phoenix, the stem of the phoenix tree is compared with the ripples on the surface of a sandy um, uh, water bank, or uh, muddy bank, after the water has receded. And there are comparisons made between fauna and another fauna, like ibis, for instance. Bird is described, it is mentioned in the stock, and it says that beak is curved like a swim. And I know you can relate that it must be an ibis fauna. Could be a nice. Humans with fun, plenty of information. Especially maybe women. Women are compared with <coughs> uh, with the flora and fauna. It's fauna, what is here? Fish and the eyes. I agree, I gave you an example also. Sometimes humans with flora, plenty of bamboo, <coughs> the shoulders, the arms of the women. Compared with the bamboo. I was wondering what bamboo has got to do with arm. It is because of the roundness, perfectly round. You know, not muscular, it is arm, straight and roundish, the bamboo. And there are a lot of comparisons between animal behavior and human behavior. In almost all points, they indirectly refer, sometimes directly. This is animals in business. The author caught in the net. Indicates the predicament of the lady at home. With her, her husband, a man has left, he has not come back. And this, is, this is a symbolic um, personalization of what is happening in nature. Then, animal sounds. The last, my last presentation on the bear in Indian culture, I gave the example of the sloth bear. The sloth bear feeding sound is compared to the bellows of it by an iron smith. Because thought that suck. They suck all the termites and the larvae. They are like a vacuum cleaners. There is another poem where the, the sound of the gecko in the forest, in the Palai forest, in the desert forest, deserted forest or past forest, is compared to the uh, thieves, the, the, the decoys sharpening their equipment. So one needs to listen to the sound and then come to a conclusion. A lot of study can be done. This particular thing I had uh, looked at in compared with slot bread and the windows of the iron smith. So I am not going to talk about any of this. I'm going to talk about only flora and fauna comparison. Plenty of them. This is my you can see the scope, level of scope, the scope of information.
mentioned that a Sangam literature contains on natural history. Now, even this, no literature I have come across such a kind of detailed, minor, astonishing information on natural history. Only Sangam literature, no other Tamil literature either. So whether the fauna is compared with flora or flora is compared with fauna. Like for instance, plant the, 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 the uh, river side of um, uh, lily, leaf is covered compared with the uh, bat. So we need to know what bats look, how bats look like, look like and what is the connection. Which one is com being compared? What if the poet suffers? Which one the poet suffers? Do you see the plant or the animal? It is like a chicken and egg situation. So I had to organize my presentation. So I, I was tempted to organize it on our wise, but I have based it on flora. I have looked at based my presentation based on flora. When um, Kupara Guru mentioned about this approach to me, I used to keep a list of flora and fauna comparison that I come across whenever I read. I read. And my list was 38. I know that there is more. I have not listed down. So, as of today, it has crossed 100. Uh, there are 105. Of which, about for 95 and 96, I have found the authentic references. We just keep adding them. So, I will classify it. I am going to give my organization of my presentation based on flora, monocots, and dicots. Monocots will start with bamboo, pandanus, palmera, banana, sugarcane grass. Green lily, lotus, and lilies. And among dicots, I'm going to take this coral, coral trees, which is Erythrina, silk cotton tree, Malabar Kino, which is Herodopus Marsupia, Hispania, Albizia, Alexandrine Laurel, and Mahua tree. Now, the choices of these plants have nothing to do with any particular reason. All the comparisons, all the analog analogies that I have um, identified. Belong to these particular species of plants. That is the main reason for choosing these particular species of plants. At the outset, I have to thank the technology two people. The, job, the tremendous job this gentleman has done. His name is Pandey Raja. He retired as a professor at American College, Chennai. He has a website, Concordance of Community. You can go and look for every word. In literature, yes, alphabetically quoted. Because there is no meaning, you need to know the tongue. Uh, it's completely split and it is there for you to see. But words have multiple meanings, you need to be very careful when you find, want to find out the name of tiger or anything else. The frequency of occurrence, you need to know the multiple meanings of the word. That is the challenge. I would like to thank his uh, website. I thank him for all the efforts he has made. In fact, he doesn't. He has not stopped with Sangam literature. He has gone to Bhakti. He has finished all Bhakti literature also. He is going further down. Even Sira Purana, he has an index for Sira Purana. The, the other, uh, this is um, other person I would like to bring to your notice is Vaidehi Herbert. He lives in Hawaii, USA. He's the only person who has translated all Sangam works. The beauty is that our Sangam works are available online. This is the website. Available online. She has given also word to word names. It is very beneficial for people like us. Now let me go to the topic proper. Let me take, start with bamboo. Perhaps the most commonly referred text of plants in Sangam literature is bamboo. Appears about 333 times overall, roughly. 333 is this case number, jersey number. And 289 times in about 255 poems of 8 anthology. I'm talking about 8 anthology, the epic of Ayundi, not Patuka, this number. Very, very, very easy. Now, there are different names used for bamboo in Tamil literature. You can see the list Amai, Varai, Kam. Kambu, Kambu, Kambu has multiple meanings. Karai, Panai, not that Panai, Panai is Pam, which is Murusuri Nai. Mundul, Viril, Vey, Veda, Mungil. So Mungil probably refers to only, that's a, that's a name we all know, the last one, Mungil. 
there are many words and they have multiple meanings. You need to be very careful. Uh, like Veda, I will talk about it later. There are many references to animals feeding on bamboo, especially elephants. And as I said before, this is a Tamil convention. Bamboo, the shoulders of women, compared to bamboo. Very big, the term used is panaitol. panaitol. Now, bamboo in Adam Anthologies, the five songs that I have uh, in the different names, uh, I have looked at. Uh, I have found where do they find? Where are they referred? Where which landscape they come from? Not much from scrublands or grassland, river in lowland, or littoral forest. They all come from the mountainous landscape. And the mountainous landscape or the forest landscape, scrublands in dry season, most of the majority, of the land, substantial purpose, not the purpose of the references come from past forests. Remember, you know they can catch fire. So for past forest, a good identity for a particular um, species, their liking is bamboo. If you go to Assam, for instance, in Assam, bamboo, Assam is the land of bamboo. They are all in the riverine law like that. The Sangam literature had developed in an Assamese kind of landscape. Bamboo would have found maximum reference in the riverine law. Okay. The first species I have taken is the wild boar. To start with, wild boar, the crested hairs of wild boar, as compared to the bamboo roots, the protecting, radiating bamboo roots, the word used is pandri, the common word we all know that yes. so we do not know whether it refers to the wild boar or domestic. Uh, this is also another related thing I wanted to share. It also comes from mountainous landscape. You can see on the right side I am sharing the icon of that landscape. It is not fringy, that is mountainous landscape. So also the occupied also comes from the mountainous and lowland adjoining areas. Now here the porcupine trees are compared to the phoenix leaves that are used to weave the roofs, roof of a hut. Huts woven with date palms resemble the backs of the porcupine. This is what the poet writes. The word that is used is, you can see the porcupine is A. Those who know what Tamil will know it, A. A comes from the basically either the dart. The people believe that porcupines could dart the cage. That's the name Aiden. There are other names in Sangam literature. Mulavu, another name. Mulma, it means. Our animal. These are the other names of pocket. There are many names. Bamboo sheets is compared to here is a spotted deer. Noon pori mark. Noon pori means spotted deer. Sidi pola, vidir mulai, kan pori, pali. Pali is the sheet. So, that is another amazing number. They are not the kacha ones, the dry ones are being compared. Very specific. Like fallen bamboo sheets are compared to the years of the year. I continue with the spotted deer. This is a littoral landscape. I am moving to the littoral landscape. Iconia is found in the littoral landscape. Its species name is Pescatric goat. Its name is goat foot. The goat foot, other poets compare it to the same as a deer foot. Adempo creepers whose double lobe, the white of double lobe leaves are like the hooves of the deer. This is one of the 18 words in Sikkim Lake. It's about deer and the Iconia. The branches, very simple, the branches of trees are compared to the branching antlers. Okay. The word that is used is Maruku. Tawai Maruku. Tawai means oh, Tawata. Tawata. Yedi Kalai, Yedi Kalai is the name for the Kalai Maan, that is its water deer. In Sangam literature, in these days, when we say, if I am not wrong, Kalai Maan, it is black one. But in Sangam literature, Kalai Maan means water deer. So, Kavai Maruku, Maruku is the word that is used for the paunch as well as antlers, as well as the dust. 
A stack with four families that look like bright branches. This is from Pali landscape. Right branches obviously has to be Pali landscape. So this is that's about the bamboo and the associated species. Next most important species is Rupai, Pandanus, Odaratima. Odaratima is the one that we use to what we call Tare in Tamil, Tarambu. In the littoral landscape, next to Alexandrian Lol, which is Pune, or Elophilum Minophilum, Rupai is the most important one in the littoral landscape. What I have seen. It's called Tarling in Tamil, well known for its fragrant flowers, and its leaves are in some places the leaves are used instead of for flavoring rice. And there is aromatic oil extracted from the male flowers. People in Kerala even now make mat from their leaves. It's a very fibrous, they make mat by from leaves. And the flower is something that is offered to Lord Vishnu. People don't wear the flower, uh, but among flowers, king of smell is Tari. King of smell is Tari. Or Pandanus. Uh, I would like to give the opportunity to mention about Pandanus. There is a publication called Pandanus. Nature in Literature. Very interesting. The, the soft copies are select publications, articles are available online. I like just given you a screenshot of one of the issues of Pandanus publication. Now, what is what does Sangam literature say about Pandanus? This one poem describes everything that I'm going to talk about subsequently. The scaly trunks of tarry trees look like the backs of curved string. Their thorny leaves like swords of sharks. Their mature buds like tusks of two elephants. Their appearance different or unlike a female deer. And their stems, their patterns like that of a festival ground. In the festival, we get a lot of This is a kind of literature from Natrinic, one of the literature. So let's see what they mean one by one. The scaly trunks of tarry trees look like the backs of the coral string. The stripes, the stripes are compared with another fauna of the same landscape. The comparison need not be always in the last, same landscape. It can be even with animals of a different landscape. This is the most important thing. What is a pandanus shark? Tarry, tarry leaves like horns of sharks. The word used is again kodu. Odu is one of the names for all. Like Maruku for the deer, you have this all antlers, Maruku, Odu. These are all the real Tamil names for the tusk. The word Tandam, the common word to use, comes from Sanskrit. Danta, dental, dentistry, Tandam. It is not a pure Tamil word. You have alternate many words in Tamil. Odu. Maruku, uh, Eiru, uh, these are the names for the picture. You can see it's a sharp with a tusk, with a projection, with a rostrum. That looks like the tardy leaf with thorns on either side. It is nothing but the sawfish. The sawfish is not actually a shark, it is actually a, it would be a, be a skate that has got a body of a shark. It's a skate. Elasma birds, no doubt. Another point. Large bear red swift sharks with sword like beaks roam. All these are references to sawfish. Now, not one poet. You will see three or four poets mentioning this. It doesn't mean that every poet had to see this. Things start and it becomes a poetic convention. They need not see that every time. I'll give more examples for that. They need not see every activity personally experienced. But there are occasions where only one poet has mentioned. That shows that it is personal, personal experience. Now, the Bandana's flowers are compared to the dust of it. The color is very like ivory gold. The buds, the buds are compared to the dust of the blue gold. 
கருத்து கழித்து மறுப்பு என்னன்னா அரும்பு முதிர்ப்பு மறுப்பு மறுப்பு இஸ் தட் இஸ் யூஸ் தங்கம் தசு நக்கரை தங்கம் கேட்டு மறுப்பு இஸ் யூஸ் Yeah, the Lake Putan doesn't mean that he danced only on Mexico, Yagalotan. 